I'm here at ASN Kidney Week 2019 with Deputy Secretary Eric Hargan. Deputy Secretary, you've been a robust champion on behalf of the 37 million Americans affected by kidney diseases, and we at ASN appreciate your being here today. One of the major themes of Kidney Week is talking about President Trump's recent executive order on advancing American kidney health. You've been heavily involved in this effort. What excites you most about this initiative? Well, I think that it represents the opportunity that's very almost unprecedented for us to work really closely and collaboratively on behalf of those 37 million patients that you were talking about. We've got one in five Medicare dollars are spent on kidney care and kidney disease. That's a huge amount of money and it's a huge burden on the Americans who are suffering from this disease. So it's, it's a very exciting opportunity for us to focus on the issue and really help move the needle on this disease. Well, we at ASN are equally enthusiastic about collaborating uh, in support of that goal, so thank you. Uh, you recently led an effort within uh, the Department of Health and Human Services to further engage the investment community in thinking about opportunities in healthcare. And as Secretary Azar just mentioned in his speech earlier, one of the things that HHS is really doubling down on is its support for Kidney X. And if the innovators coming through Kidney X are to be successful, they're definitely going to need partners in the investment world. What message would you have for the investment community about kidney care at this moment in time and how it's changing? Well, it's actually very timely because just had a meeting last Friday with uh, my Innovation and Investment Summit. And uh, the first meeting that I had with them over a year ago, um, the charge I gave them really was oriented around kidney care. I said that technology and investment had been very spotty in some parts uh, and that kidney care had been really lagging behind other areas of investment and innovation over the past few decades. And we really wanted to look at that as an example of why do people invest in a certain area and innovate in those areas? And what can we do inside HHS to really facilitate that? And so in the last meeting, uh, we were talking about this issue. And they said, you know, you have a lot of things that you're doing, but really one of the things that has been transformative to the investment community has been this executive order. It's really focused them on the fact that we are focusing on kidney care and on innovation in that space as, one of the, as a focus for this administration. And so that has really brought their attention to this in a way uh, that, that is very new to them. And so between the emphasis that we've been having in this, plus then the release of the executive order, uh, they have been really focused on this. So I think that for innovators in this space, uh, this Kidney X and, and other areas, I think that you're seeing that the door is going to be much more open, I believe, in the investment community. If my uh, investment summit uh, as any indication and we have a lot of very top healthcare investors in that so that is just tremendously exciting because as you highlighted rightly innovation and kidney care has really lagged behind other fields so yes. we're looking forward to having the executive order help to jumpstart that yes. together with some of the existing HHS initiatives right. like kidney X yes. so just to shift gears a little bit in what is a very broad portfolio that you have um, as ASM members and other health professionals here at Kidney Week know and one of the reasons that they have been, I think, reluctant to maybe jump into more innovative or holistic ways of delivering care for their patients is some concerns about anti-kickback statute and Stark Law. And yes. I know that you have recently led an effort within HHS to propose a rule that would actually change how some of those laws are interpreted yep. to create more latitude. Can you talk a little bit about that and how you think it might benefit kidney patients? Sure. So um, we had identified the Stark Law and the anti-kickback statute, areas which had been really stopping us from moving forward in coordinated care. A lot of the a lot of the restrictions in those laws that are longstanding, decades old, were created around a different paradigm of delivering care and an area in which there's much less collaboration and coordination among care providers. Uh, we know that an area like kidney care is an area where you need a lot of collaboration. We, when we went out with our original request for information, we heard very strongly uh, from kidney care providers that this was one of the areas that had blocked them from performing better. Uh, for the patients because they can only look in their siloed way and can't really extend across an entire coordinated care continuum. Uh, so uh, we have proposed a rule, the comments close at the end of this year. Uh, we hope to hear from everyone in the community about this. And you will be hearing from ASN, we Great. look forward to Fan it. Fantastic, uh, about, what we, about how the rule would think would work and how we could even improve what we're doing in this space to allow for more coordinated care. So an example that would be, uh, an example that we would think about is if you have say a, a diabetic care provider, you have a physician in the area, a nephrologist or someone, uh, other, other people, they can actually 
uh, provide in-home patients with, say, two-way communications, sensor technology, where the patient can communicate two-way from their home with the doctor or the care provider or the center uh, so that they can coordinate care with each other. They could also provide data analytics with each other so that they can have a much more robust attitude towards the data that's being provided so that they can coordinate care better, provide care coordinators who can manage the patient experience so that they don't fall through the cracks between one provider and another. These are things that have been prohibited so far. You know, the donation to patients of tools to engage or to coordinate care, the ability to kind of coordinate and provide incentives among providers has been lacking. Uh, there's been a, uh, people have been scared uh, to provide these incentives because they believe that the law would directly prohibit it. Well, our people got together, they believe that there's not a risk of problems in the program and they can provide these flexibilities. So that's what we're proposing. Uh, we're going to be happy to hear from the community, the kidney community and others about how the, how the rule looks, how we can improve it, um, and, and move it forward uh, in short order. Well, it's very exciting and I think it's going to be key in moving from the fee-for-service world to the value-based care world. Yes. Certainly a goal that we at ASN are excited about helping our members uh, transition to. Exactly, exactly. And so, you know, that, that is going to be on top of the new CMMI models that are going to be driving towards, uh, you know, a, a more in-home uh, dialysis provision and transplantation. So we've got, we've got models on foot. We've got the regulatory reform in the Stark and Annie kickback uh, areas that we think are going to open up opportunities for people to provide value-based arrangements for themselves, to move from this siloed fee-for-service area where we pay for sickness to an area where we pay for health and outcomes, and that's what we want. It's a great moment in American healthcare to enable that change on yeah. behalf of kidney patients. Yeah. So, Mr. Hargan, you've served in multiple administrations yeah. and in a, a wealth of different positions. I would be interested in what your advice for ASN and the broader community, based on your experience, is how can we ensure the continued momentum from this executive order and work to implement its goals? What recommendations might you have? Well, one thing is keep doing what you're doing. Obviously, there's been success uh, for all of us who've been collaborating on this. Uh, when you see the high amount of attention that we've got, where the, the president himself is focused on enabling this, that gives a lot of wind in our sails at HHS to be able to advocate for these changes and these reforms, and to be able to work with all of our partners in the private sector on these things. So I would say, seize the opportunity this, this moment is providing. Uh, is one thing, uh, to participate, keep participating in us, keep working towards innovation, towards, and we will help facilitate that. You see, we've got an array of our agencies that are working on this right now, whether it's National Institutes of Health, Food and Drug Administration, Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, uh, Office of the Secretary, everybody's working together. I'll see Inspector General through the, through the anti-kickback statute. A lot of people, the Chief Technology Officer and the sponsorship of Kidney X, those, those areas are, we're moving forward on a vast array of fronts. So keep working with us. We are, the doors open for us to be able to work closely with you all to advance America's kidney health. Well, we in the community sincerely appreciate that. And we at ASM look forward to taking up on that offer, yep. engaging with your office and the multitude of agencies you just named who are all collaborating to improve health on behalf of 37 million Americans with kidney diseases. Thank you so much. Thank you. Much appreciated.